You can grease for days with a new 18 volt P3410 grease gun from Ryobi. We'll get to the details when we get back. I'm Tim Johnson and this is Shop Tool Reviews. So it's a little different backdrop than the typical Shop Tool Reviews video. We're here at a river house that we like to go to and vacation at from time to time and I thought it'd be a great time to use the new Ryobi P3410 18 volt grease gun to grease our trailer wheels, especially since I didn't do it before we left for the river. So great time to do that is before you go on those trips. Thankfully, we didn't have any wheel bearing issues. Uh, so a couple of things about the new P3410. Number one, this thing on one battery will shoot about 19 cartridges. Uh, so 16 ounce or whatever, 14 and a half ounce cartridges, whatever they are, I think they're considered 16 ounce, but 14 and a half ounce contents. Anyway, so plenty enough to do a full day's work uh, and then some. If you're doing more than that, you need to step up to an industrial gun anyway. So uh, the nice thing about the Ryobi is they usually hit that mark for that entry level pro or that DIY or week weekender, something like that. So somebody has got a tandem axle trailer like I got here where I've got a you know, grease uh, four, eight wheel bearings, uh, very easy to do so with this gun. 10,000 PSI, so plenty enough pressure to handle all that. And, and by the way, don't just blow out the seals when you're, when you're greasing things. As soon as that grease starts oozing out, you know, let the water come out. And as soon as that grease starts oozing out, then back off the trigger. There's no sense in just blowing out the seals, if you will. Uh, you do have a trigger lock here to kind of lock that trigger out. That's not to lock the trigger on. That's just to lock it to an off mode. Uh, you also have a light mode there. So as soon as you pull the trigger, that comes on. I believe it's a brush motor, but who cares on something like this? You just want it to be able to, to push that grease. Doesn't need speed or anything like that, even though I think it'll do seven and a half ounces in a minute. So basically half a tube a minute. Um, so plenty enough speed or plenty enough pressure to get the job done, if you will. This is your purge valve here. So you need that when you're actually installing a new tube. We're gonna go over that here in a moment. And you can get a, a 30 inch tube here or a 30 inch uh, a grease hose. And one thing I like about this is it, it's got, it's kind of ambidextrous, if you will. So you got the, uh, the tube holder here uh, on the left and the right hand side. So depending on how you wanna put it up or what have you, you can store that, that uh, 30 inch grease hose. Or if you wanted to put a longer hose on it, can wrap it around and hook it to both sides. Let's go over a couple of things about greasing. Uh, I've seen lots of people buy grease guns because, hey, they want to start, you know, greasing their own uh, front ends or they want to start greasing their, uh, you know, they bought a boat and they need to, they've heard they need to grease those axles from time to time. Well, they want to just slam the tube in there and go and they really don't understand how these grease ends work. So I've pulled this tube off of here like you should do when you're having to put a tube in for the first time or a new tube in after you've gone through a whole tube. Now really what I first should have done before I ever pulled it out of there was to pull this out and lock it over into place. So you see there you've got that little cam place there. You've got a you've got a groove there in the in the rod there that you can slide that over and lock that into place. So there's a spring in here. Now it's locked all the way back and I can slide this tube all the way into place. Again, before we get to that, let's look at what we have going on in here. So if I take this end off, which you should never have to do, by the way. I say never, rarely should you ever have to do this. I'm gonna pull this out. And now we see this long spring in here. So this is basically the plunger. Now, there's a little notch in here that actually frees this from this plunger or locks it onto that plunger. And that's gonna be important here in just one moment. So let's put this back in here so you kind of understand how this works is what I'm trying to say before you just try to, you know, throw something together and make it work. So we're back to here. We've taken the cylinder off the gun. We're ready to put our first tube in. So first things first, never take that end off. That's gonna go last. So not never, but don't take that one off first. We're gonna take the plastic in off first. And there's why it's only 14 and a half ounces, by the way. And so now we're gonna slide that down in the gun. Oops, sorry. Let's first lock this back. There we go, so now we've got the handle locked back. Now we've got the open end of the tube with the plastic, had the plastic cap on it, and with our missing grease there. And we're gonna slide that in. So it's really hard to, to do this wrong because that metal piece won't slide in there. You see it kind of, it locks there, it doesn't go in. 
<clears throat> so now, and what's happened is that plunger is now inside this cardboard tube here. Now we can take this piece off. Try not to make a mess or too big of a mess anyway. And now we can put this in our gun. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, right? There we go. Get it good and snug. Don't have to be too tight, but just snug with hand. And now we're going to take this rod and slide it back over. And so now it won't push down and that's good. We want that locked for a second because we're going to open up this purge valve here. So open up this purge valve and I'm just going to set this on my knee and I'm going to push down on this. Now we see grease coming out of here right there. So as we see grease coming out, See, I see the green grease coming out now. Now I can close that up. Try to stay clean here. And now I want to turn this until it frees up and I can shove it all the way in. Now this rod is free from that plunger and now that plunger and spring is pushing on that grease and I've already primed it. I've already got it up here. So now when I pull that trigger, There we go. So now we're getting grease out. Here's the deal. I think the P3410 from Ryobi is a great little grease gun. Now 129 for bear tool, and I bet at some point you'll see this thing for $99, $109 on sale for bear tool. And I think that's a good price if you're on the Ryobi platform. If you're buying this and having to buy a battery, it's gonna put it a little steeper, so I don't know how you know, dead set on it I would be, but a great grease gun, if you do have the Ryobi platform, definitely worth the effort to have this or worth the money to have it. Uh, and it's gonna save you some time from, a lot of times when you're either under a car or around these boat trailers, rather than having to use two hands to pump these things with one hand, you can be put, sticking it on the fitting, the other hand pulling the trigger and a few seconds and you're done. So it does kind of ease that pain of greasing those fittings. Definitely a convenience tool, uh, but it's definitely gonna take care of the things that you need to do. Again, if, if you're in industrial stuff and, and, and greasing heavy equipment, probably not the gun for you, but again, that's not Ryobi selling this for. So 129 bucks, look for it at the Home Depot soon. Again, it was supposed to launch in May, but I haven't seen it on the shelves yet. So, so look for it. We'll definitely keep you in the know, uh, so make sure you subscribe, like, and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Have a great day.